Hello and welcome. In this lecture video, I'm going to review or provide an overview of the statement of cash flows. I'm going to also talk about the components of the statement of cash flows, and specifically I'll talk about what we mean by operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. Okay, so let's talk about what is the purpose of the statement of cash flows, or, or why why do we need this? Why is this an important financial statement? So this is another core financial statement, such as the balance sheet, the income statement, statement of retained earnings, statement of owner's equity. We also have the statement of cash flows, and this is a core financial statement. And while we think about the income statement and this show the income statement of course shows us revenues and expenses and it shows us net income that's really valuable there are differences between net income and cash flow so for example there are some non-cash expenses that show up in the income statement that we don't have to pay any cash for so for example depreciation depreciation is a non-cash expense there are also some timing differences between when we can make a sale and then when we can collect cash for that sale. So remember, for example, if I sell someone a laptop and they say, I can't pay you now, I'll pay you in a month, I can still record that sale. And of course, what I would do is debit accounts receivable and credit sales. That shows up as sales on my income statement, but I still have not collected cash yet for that sale. I don't collect cash until the customer pays me, and at that point I would debit cash and credit the accounts receivable. So there are differences between net income and cash flow. And so the statement of cash flows is important because it helps reconcile those differences. And more importantly and more broadly, what it shows us is here's where we get our cash. These are our sources of our cash. So these is it's going to list here are the organization's sources of cash inflows. Where are they getting their cash from? Do they sell land? Do they sell a building? Are they getting their cash? How much cash are they getting from sales? How much cash are they getting from interest revenue? Okay, so it, it shows us here are all the sources of our cash inflows. And what I mean by cash inflow is cash coming into the organization. That's the cash inflow. The statement of cash flows, in addition to showing us all the sources of cash inflows, also shows us all the sources of our cash outflows. Cash outflow is exactly what it sounds like. It's the organization spending cash. So... How much cash do they pay for utilities? How much cash do they pay for purchasing, purchasing merchandise inventory for resale? How much cash do they pay for purchasing a new piece of machinery or a new plot of land for expansion? So the statement of cash flows shows us, again, what are our sources of cash inflows? What are our cash outflows? And then it shows us, well, what's the difference between the cash inflows and the cash outflows, which is basically our net cash, it shows us that as well. And then it also helps us to reconcile beginning cash, so cash at the beginning of the accounting period, to cash at the end of the accounting period. So how did we get on the balance sheet maybe $50,000 cash January 1st to $100,000 cash? on December 31st. We know that's a $50,000 difference, but where did that $50,000 difference come from? How much of that $50,000 difference is due to collecting cash for sales or because we sold land and we got cash? All those questions we can answer by looking at the statement of cash flows, okay? So that's what I'm saying right over here. If we kind of walk through some of these bullets, what I was just kind of going over is just an overview of some of these bullets here. But let me go into these in a little bit more detail and touch on each one of them. Okay. So the importance so identifies sources of cash flows. And as I was saying over here, this explains the difference between beginning cash flow and ending cash flow, beginning and ending balances. Okay. Why do we need to understand cash flows? Well, I think some of this should be a little bit intuitive that 
if we're not generating enough cash to cover our expenses you know we are not generating it we're not collecting enough cash from our customers to to pay for our utilities or pay for our employees that's not sustainable that is a big problem that means we might actually have to borrow money and there's only so much money that we can borrow okay so it helps whether helps determine whether a company or any organization has enough cash to pay for its debts also we can look and say well how much cash are we pulling in how, what's our cash inflows versus our cash outflows and if we see that outflows are more than inflows that can hurt our ability to pursue new opportunities because we're not generating enough cash investing in new opportunities costs a lot of cash and so we have to have we have to be generating or we want to be generating more cash than we spend because that helps us pursue new opportunities also it helps investors and creditors and regulators assess such factors as what's our ability to generate future cash flows to pay dividends because in order to pay dividends remember we dividends are distributions of cash to our shareholders okay we have to have the cash to pay dividends if we don't have enough cash to pay dividends well that could cause problems for the stock price if we're not generating enough cash to pay for our expenses we'll have to borrow money external financing also reasons for the difference between net income and related cash what we'll talk about is in future lecture videos is we'll talk about um, the operating activities statement pardon me the operating activities section of the statement of cash flows and how to reconcile that to net income so basically what I'm saying over here if I were to summarize this is what are the differences why do we have differences between net income and cash flow from operating activities and I kind of alluded to that earlier when I talked about we have some non-cash expenses as depreciate such as depreciation. Another reason is timing differences. Remember that I can recognize a sale even though I haven't been paid cash yet. So I sell a laptop to somebody, I pass title to of that laptop to that other person. If that person doesn't pay me right away I can still recognize the sale because of the revenue recognition principle I rec recognize revenue when it's earned I can still recognize that sale even though I haven't been paid cash yet okay so those are some differences between net income and cash flows from operating activities and the statement of cash flows lets us see in a more granular level what are those differences okay Also, as I was saying earlier, it lets us see what, you know, if I said I had $50,000 beginning cash, $100,000 ending cash, what accounts for that difference? Why do we have that difference? What are the causes of that difference? The statement of cash flows helps us to understand that. Okay. When we're talking about cash, what we're really saying is cash that we have in the bank account, but also cash equivalents. And so what do we mean by a cash equivalent? It's a short-term, highly liquid investment can be easily converted into cash. It's so close to maturity that its value is not affected by or significantly affected by interest rate changes. Examples, not just bank, not just money in the savings account, but also some treasury bills, money market funds. Generally, we're talking about with respect to cash equivalents within three months of its maturity date, so it's not significantly affected by interest rate changes. Okay, so when we have our statement of cash flows, what we're going to do is we're going to classify our, we're going, we have three sections on the statement of cash flows, operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. And so because we have those three sections of the statement of cash flows, what we'll need to do is classify cash receipts which are cash inflows those are cash inflows okay another word cash payments cash outflows and another word for cash outflows or cash payments is cash disbursements okay and I'll write that down cash 
disbursements. It's another name for that. So we need to classify our cash inflows and cash outflows as either operating, investing, or financing. So let's talk about operating activities now, okay? So operating activities refer to those transactions or I can be more I can what I could substitute the word transactions as cash flows cash flows cash inflows or cash outflows those transactions that determine net income so for example production and purchase of inventory purchasing inventory would be the cash that we have to pay for purchasing inventory would be classified as an operating activities cash flow okay selling goods and services to customers that's another example of a cash flow that would be classified as operating activities so when we make a sale to someone we collect cash for that sale either right away or in a month later or two months later that collection of cash associated with that sale of goods and services that is classified as cash flow that would fall under the operating activities section of the statement of cash flows so again at a broad level we're looking at those cash flows that relate to transactions that typically determine net income some some more specific examples receipts from customers so customers paying us if we were to invest in stock in another company and that's something we talk more about in chapter 15 where we might want to purchase stock in a key supplier or a key customer when we purchase that stock we could receive dividends an organization could receive dividends if they receive dividends from purchasing stock in another organization that would be classified as operating activities cash flow interest received from borrowers if we lent money to another organization and we get interest revenue that would be classified as operating activities and then as I was saying here dividends received some examples of cash outflows salaries and wages that we have to pay our employees and if we think about that that makes sense right because we would see salaries expense on the income statement and so again what are we talking about with operating activities transactions that determine net income so paying salaries and wages that shows up as salaries expense that's why it's classified as operating activities payments to suppliers for merchandise inventory yes that's going to eventually show up in cost of goods sold which shows up on the income statement okay paying any taxes paying any fines paying any, if we had to borrow money from someone from another organization that interest expense would also be included in operating activities okay it's really important to understand cash flow from operating activities because a company with negative cash flow from operating activities is not going to be able to raise cash from other sources indefinitely so if we have negative cash flow from operating activities what that means is these cash inflows are not enough to pay for all that so what do we have to do we have to borrow we have to borrow and we can't do that forever and the more that we borrow the more creditors are going to be reluctant to give us more money the more debt we have the more reluctant they're going to be to extend us more credit okay so I'm going to end this lecture video now and in the next lecture video I'll continue by talking about investing in financing activities okay thank you so much